Hi, uh, I'm Edward Yen. I'm a junior medical oncologist at Baylor College of Medicine. Uh, for this part of the prostate cancer series, I'm going to be talking about a, a case of uh, castration resistant prostate cancer. We've already heard Dr. Jones talk a little bit about precision therapy, and Dr. Godoy talked earlier about uh, germline and somatic mutational testing. I'm going to expand on that a little bit further. This actually, this topic is uh, very uh, expansive. Uh, and I have a very limited amount of time, so I'm really going to be focusing my talk on uh, DNA damage repair and also the, uh, the two PARP inhibitors that have recently been approved uh, for, um, uh, for prostate cancer. So going right into the case, this is a 60-year-old man with a positive family history of prostate cancer. Uh, he presents to clinic with progression, uh, progressing uh, castration-resistant disease. Uh, regarding his history, uh, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer eight years ago after having uh, an elevated PSA. Uh, his surgery was done at that point in time. His stage was a pathologic T3 in zero. His Gleason score was uh, four plus four predominantly, uh, and his margins were clear. His post-op PSA obtained a major of a 0 0.01. Uh, ultimately, his PSA rose uh, later, and so he underwent salvage radiation and hormonal therapy about five years ago. Three years ago, he uh, progressed with metastatic disease, uh, which was discovered in his uh, bones, lungs, and lymph nodes. Uh, he was started on chemo uh, hormonal therapy at that point in time. Uh, earlier this year, he developed castration-resistant prostate cancer. He was treated with uh, abiraterone. And uh, unfortunately now, uh, he presents the clinic with uh, progression. His PSA is rising, and scans uh, uh, indicate that he, is now have, he now has a progression in his liver, as well as the uh, bones and lymph nodes as well. So his performance set is excellent. Um, and uh, the obviously, the obvious uh, question here is uh, what further options does this patient uh, have? Uh, if we look to NCCN for, for some help, uh, you can see that uh, for patients who have uh, castration resistant prostate cancer have been previously treated with uh, abiraterone in the first line setting. Uh, there are quite a few second line options listed there in the red. Uh, some of these options or older options are familiar, familiar to us, including uh, some chemotherapy options. Uh, uh, Cipilusol T is a patient-derived vaccine that is also uh, there before. And uh, radium-223 uh, is, uh, is also familiar to, uh, to us too. Uh, enzalutamide, uh, which of course is a uh, next-generation AR-targeted agent, is listed there. Uh, but we also do see some uh, newer agents, uh, newer options including uh, alaparib and rucaparib, which are PARP inhibitors, as well as uh, pembrolizumab for, for uh, patients with uh, high uh, microsatellite instability. As you can see, uh, that uh, some of these, uh, the, the newer agents are not uh, uh, indicated for all uh, comers. Uh, for example, alaparib and rucaparib are uh, indicated for patients with uh, homologous recombination repair mutations, and uh, recaparib is indicated for those with uh, BRCA mutations. So it certainly would make sense that we would need to test these patients for these um, alterations. And so you can see in the NCCN guidelines, again, that uh, testing is recommended here as well for uh, castration-resistant prostate cancer um, with uh, metastatic disease. So uh, going uh, into homologous recombination, um, homologous recombination is a, a DNA uh, damage repair pathway that cells utilize um, in BRCA1 and BRCA2, uh, as well as other genes uh, play a role uh, in, this, in this pathway. Uh, mutations can occur in these genes and they can uh, either be germline or somatic. 25% uh, of patients will have, uh, with advanced uh, prostate cancer, will have these uh, mutations. About 12% of patients with metastatic uh, castration resistant disease will have a mutation in BRCA1 or BRCA2. Um, those patients who have uh, germline uh, uh, BRCA alterations, uh, we know that they have an increased risk of developing prostate cancer and, and they're more likely to have um, metastases as well. Uh, how does PARP fit into this? Uh, the PARP pathway is another DNA damage repair pathway that uh, serves as an alternate to the, uh, to the uh, um, homologous recombination pathway. Uh, inhibiting this pathway leads to uh, something called synthetic lethality. And as you can see here over here in the cartoon, uh, if you look at the left-hand side, a healthy cell has both of these repair pathways intact. If you uh, inhibit or, um, or if they're deficient in one of these pathways, uh, the um, cells uh, still remain to have the other pathway help to repair their DNA. However, 
in a patient with um, a homologous uh, combination uh, deficiency, such as uh, BRCA mutation, if you also treat them with a PARP inhibitor, these uh, cells ultimately uh, will die. Um, and so th this is the rationale for uh, treating the, this population of patients with a, a PARP inhibitor. So Triton 2 is a phase two study looking at uh, recaparib in the uh, uh, patients with a metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer, uh, patients with uh, resistant cancer, and also having a um, um, somatic or germline um, uh, alteration in uh, DNA damage repair genes uh, listed there uh, were eligible. And they also had to have had progression of disease uh, after having a, a previous uh, um, ER directed targeted therapy um, uh, and also one prior taxane based chemotherapy. Uh, patients were treated with recaparib until uh, radiographic progression or discontinuation. Um, and uh, you can see that the primary endpoint here was overall uh, response by, uh, by uh, radiology. Uh, secondary endpoints included duration of response or radiographic progression free survival, overall survival uh, clinic, clinical benefit rate and safety. Um, the, of note, uh, the um, BRCA1 and 2 population were, um, uh, their results were published separately than the, than the patients with non-BRCA HR, deficient, HR deficiencies. So looking at the BRCA cohort only, 115 of these patients were enrolled onto the clinical trial. Uh, they predominantly had BRCA2 mutations. Some of them had germline and others had somatic mutations. Uh, in the um, uh, uh, independent, uh, independently reviewed patients, only 62 had measurable disease. The median number of prior therapies in this cohort were two. Median treatment duration uh, of recovery was 8.1 months, and the median follow-up at the time of the report was 17.1 months. Looking at the responses in the BRCA population only, uh, you can see by independent review, the uh, confirmed overall response rate was 43.5%. The um, confirmed PSA response rate was 54.8%. Uh, 64.5% uh, of the patients had a greater than or equal to 30% uh, reduction in target lesion size. 60% uh, of the patients had a greater than or equal to 50% 50 uh, 50 drop in their PSA. Uh, regarding responses, uh, responses were seen no matter, no matter if uh, the BRCA mutations were found by somatic or germline testing, or if they had a, a BRCA1 or a BRCA2 mutation. The overall clinical benefit rate was 88.7% uh, in the uh, blinded uh, independently reviewed um, um, group. Uh, there were eight complete responses, including one patient with uh, liver metastasis. Uh, complete responders were seen uh, in patients with BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. Uh, time to response was relatively quick. There was about 70% um, uh, of patients who had a response at week eight. The median duration of response uh, was not yet reached in the uh, independently reviewed um, group. Now the non-BRCA2, um, sorry, non-BRCA population patients were uh, reported separately. And unfortunately, uh, their uh, results were not as robust. Uh, ATM was the most commonly seen uh, non-BRCA uh, uh, deficient uh, gene population. As you can see here, 40, there, were, there were 49 of these patients. Uh, the overall uh, response rate here was only 10.5%. Uh, confirmed PSA response in the ATM group uh, was only 4.1%. The median time to PSA progression in this group was, um, was uh, 3.1 months. Uh, there were some uh, patient um, populations uh, without non, uh, with uh, non-BRCA uh, mutated uh, deficiencies seen that did have a response, although uh, the, their numbers are very low. As you can see here, for example, there were only four uh, uh, FANC-A uh, uh, alterations, uh, two patients with TAL-B2, uh, and so overall the, the, uh, the, the, those uh, patients didn't really reach any sort of statistical significance to really make a, a conclusion, but um, I would say it was, it was uh, definitely intriguing. Moving on with the next um, uh, PARP inhibitor trial uh, was, uh, this is the, uh, the profound study. This was a phase three trial of olaparib in uh, resistant patients with uh, HR 
uh, uh, repair alterations. Uh, patients uh, uh, who were enrolled on this study uh, had to have uh, metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer with disease progression on prior next generation hormonal agent such as abiraterone or enzalutamide, and they had to have an alteration in at least one of any of the uh, qualifying gene, uh, genes listed in, uh, and specified on the trial. Uh, patients were randomized uh, in a two to one fashion to either receive a laparid or physician's choice next generation hormonal agent. Uh, there are two cohorts on this study. Cohort A included uh, those patients with a BRCA1 or 2 or an ATM mutation, and uh, cohort B were all the other uh, non, uh, uh, all the other um, uh, um, homologous recombinant repair uh, deficient uh, alterations uh, listed. The primary endpoint on this study was radiographic progression free survival in uh, the, the, uh, the patients in cohort A, and uh, secondary endpoints included. Uh, radiographic progression free survival in the overall, overall uh, group, as well as uh, radiographic uh, response in cohort A, uh, and time to PSA progression in cohort A, survival in cohort A. Uh, this was very interesting. Uh, in this study, uh, uh, there were 4,400 plus patients who were screened in over 20 countries. Of these patients, only 4,000 plus patients had available, available tumor tissue. Um, almost 2,800 of these, uh, these patients were uh, successfully sequenced, and only um, uh, less, than seven, uh, less than 800 patients um, had one of the um, pre-specified gene alterations. Of these patients, only 387 met all eligibility criteria and were then randomized onto the study. In cohort A, they were able to enroll 245 patients, cohort B, 387 patients. Now, taxanes, uh, prior taxing uh, treatment was not a pre-specified pre uh, eligibility criteria, but there were uh, quite a few patients who were previously treated with a taxane, uh, uh, about 65% of them. Uh, these patients were notably a different population. They were more likely to be younger with visceral metastasis and higher uh, PSA values. Um, in regards to the primary endpoint, uh, progression-free survival in cohort A, you can see here, um, that the, uh, uh, there was a split in the uh, uh, Kaplan-Meier curves. Uh, the median progression-free survival was 7.4 months versus 3.6 months uh, with a hazard ratio of uh, 0 0.34 um, in, in the uh, population uh, with uh, BRCA1, BRCA2, or an ATM an alteration. Looking at survival in cohort A as well, there was a split in the curve as well, favoring the lap rib. The median uh, overall survival in cohort A was 18.5 months versus 15.1 months. Hazard ratio here was uh, 0 0.64. And the overall uh, group and, uh, of all alterations, cohort A and cohort B, the median progression free survival here was 5.8 months versus uh, 3.5 months, still uh, significant with a hazard ratio of 0 0.49. Looking at responses, this was also very uh, interesting. In uh, cohort A, the radiographic response uh, was 33% versus 2%. And the, the uh, uh, patients who were able to achieve a greater than or equal to 50% drop in their PSA, uh, this was seen in 43% of uh, elaborate treated patients versus 8% in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the control arm. For the overall population with all, any, any alteration, uh, the uh, radiographic response rate was 22% versus 4%, and, uh, and the, uh, the patients with a greater than or equal to 50% PSA response uh, was 30% versus 10% in this group. PARP inhibitors, I combine the uh, side effects onto one slide. In general, um, we do see uh, that patients uh, experience uh, fatigue, excuse me, a loss of appetite. They also have some GI complaint complaints, including nausea, uh, diarrhea, vomiting. Uh, cytopenias are also seen uh, with uh, patients treated with the PARP inhibitors, including anemia and thrombocytopenia. Uh, Transaminitis is seen in infrequently, as well as an elevated creatinine. This was interesting uh, that the elevated creatinine is not uh, necessarily felt to be due to uh, acute renal injury, uh, more as opposed to a, uh, an inhibition of the uh, renal transporters of creatinine. Uh, in the PROFOUND study, about 4% of the patients treated with a laparib 
had a pulmonary embolism as opposed to 1% of the control arm. Uh, and PARP inhibitors are, are um, not necessarily easy to treat patients with, as can be seen by the uh, number of uh, interruptions and reductions and discontinuations. Uh, about half of the patients had to have dose interruptions. About uh, 20 to 40 percent of them have to have, have, to have uh, dose reductions. 7 to 18 percent had to have treatment discontinuations. And there were a few deaths seen on, the, uh, on these two trials. So going back to this case, uh, this patient, ultimately, we did choose to have um, a liver biopsy done. We uh, uh, specified that uh, a, a progressing new metastatic uh, liver lesion be biopsied, uh, and the tissue from this biopsy was sent uh, to pathology for review. Um, no small cell features were seen. No hybrid neuroendocrine features were seen. Uh, the tissue was also sent for foundation CD1X uh, for tumor analysis, and you can see the pdl one uh, percentage here was uh, only 1% expression. Uh, there, the tumor was also found to be microsatellite stable. Uh, the tumor mutational burden was uh, four, uh, four mutations per uh, uh, megabyte. And uh, there were no targetable genomic um, alterations seen here. And so um, given that the patient did have visceral progression, uh, he was started on uh, next-line chemotherapy. Thank you very much.